Welcome my friends, this is Maniacal Incorporated, and today I am going to restore the Druids to power in Ireland. This is one of the decisions in the Tip Volume 2 mod. And as you can see, we have a bit of work ahead of us. We need to take control of a duchy. We need a level of fame, illustrious. And we also need to have the theologian trait. Now, I actually already have, with the character I'm playing as, I already have the scholar trait. So I'm going to take the stress and put all the, the traits into theologian. So we actually already have that one done. And I'm playing in the 867 start for a number of different reasons. Most importantly, we can raid. We can raid for money and for prestige, which is something we can do in 1066 when the, uh, the all the Irish regions start off as feudal. Another reason that I'm starting in the 1067 start is because uh, Brehan Law would just have started to be written down in the 7 and 800s. Around contract law, they mentioned that you should never agree a contract with a pagan, you should never enter a contract with a pagan, and you should never allow a druid to serve as witness to a contract. Now, it's highly unlikely that you would have had pre-Christian druids in... Ireland in the 800s or Druids in their kind of pre-Christian form, but there was still a popular memory of them at this point in time. And I am playing as Ku Kongelt of the Onocht Rahlan down here in Desvuen. And if we take a look at his family, uh, we can see here that he has a very distant relative called Angus. So a very distant relative. And Angus will later on have a son called Dovdo Buren, and he will have a son called Donal, Mach Dovdo Buren, and he will be the first of the E Dovdo Buren, who will be later anglicized as the Odavrans. And the Odavrans will run a very important Brehan Law School in Cahar in County Clare in the 1500s. They're one of the last great hereditary Brehan Law families in Ireland. Now, the reason that we're focusing so much on Brehan Law is because many people have this kind of meme idea. You see it, it pops up on TikTok. American TikTokers every year put out uh, clips about how St. Patrick genocided the Druids when he arrived in Ireland. The reality is that when Christianity arrives in Ireland, the Druids adopt the writing system, and many of them go on to form the basis of the Brehan class. So we're going to take one of the great Brehan families, the guardians of Shenicus, the ancient traditions of the Irish, and we're going to have them look back to an earlier manifestation of their craft, and back into the days of the Druids. And with the Odavrans, we are going to restore the Druids to power in Ireland. So we can see that Kukangelt has already taken the scholar focus. What I'm going to do is reset those perks and put them into Theologian, I think we're going to go for the medicine focus. We need to keep this man alive for as long as possible. He's 47. The only good thing is that his son, an heir, Krahur, is also learning focused. So, worst comes to worst. And something happens to Ku Kongelt. We should be able to get uh, Krahur to take on the theologian focus. So, we take... Theologian, and then we focus on whole of body. We start off quite weak. I think we're actually the weakest power in Munster, so we're going to need to form some strong alliances to counter that. And something that helps is the way that insularism is represented in the Tip Volume 2 mod. We have syncretic folk traditions. So this means that we consider unreformed fates hostile instead of evil. And they also consider us hostile instead of evil, which means that there is no longer that 1,000 point penalty for trying to marry into Viking families. So we can form an alliance with the ruler of the Isle of Man. And this would have been very common historically in the mid-9th century. For our son Krahur, we will organize an alliance with the daughter of A. Finlia. So A would be the High King of Ireland at this point in time the King of Tara, and the King of the Northern Enail. And we're going to be depending on him a lot in the early stage of the game. 
We've established those alliances and a knight has arrived at our court. We're very badly caught for knights at the moment, but we're going to start on the conquest of Munster. Here is Ken Philead, who was historically the king of Munster at this time. Uh, succeeded in 872 by Dunica, Mach Dov So we are going to, because I think he is the weakest of the rulers in the province at the moment. And you can see there that we have claims to every county on the island for 25 prestige. Or 25 piety, I should say. And now if we call A to war, it's going to cost us 150 prestige. Unfortunately, we're going to have to do that a couple of times in the early game. Kinfilead's forces are on the way back. We are sick. Things are looking bad already. Here is our son, who I've appointed as our physician. I think we can get away if it's just a cough. We're doing no more than is necessary. And we do indeed feel a bit brighter, just as we're about to be hit by Kinfilead's forces. And we actually took Ken Filead himself prisoner. So we could very well ransom him to himself. And then because we control the territory, it'll still be at 100% war score. Well, our alliance with the Isle of Man didn't last all that long. Her father has just died and her brother will not sign or will not negotiate an alliance with us, we're going to offer marriage to the daughter of the ruler of the Dalnaradi. Considering how sick-looking we are, we're going to keep things moving into Loch Lane. We will declare war to conquer the county. And if we look at our allies, it's going to be 75 prestige to call uh, Let Lober. So I'm going to call him instead. We'll save, we'll save a few bob. We'll stand our forces up. We'll have them ready. We might have to do a bit of a run around until they arrive. Let Lober's forces are just about to enter Desvuen. So we will march into Loch Lane. And we're back to our old self. Nothing but a bit of war to make you feel good about yourself. And we have... Well, look at that. We've gotten an unpressed claim to Loch Lane. That's fantastic. We might use that sometime. The siege continues in Loch Lane, just as the last of Loch Lane's forces were wiped out. We will enforce our demands. And we now have, I'm pretty sure, enough land and money just about to form the Duchy of Munster. Now what we're going to do is we're going to begin a scheme to try and sway Lorcan, an ancestor of Brian Baru. So we're going to try and sway him and offer him vassalization. Now Dunica, because he's paranoid, there's an extra minus 20 penalty. We're going to try and get the Dalgosh to join us peacefully anyway. We're going to wait for the army to recover. We've become the head of culture. We're going to wait for the army to recover. And then we're going to go on a few raids and try and get some money together. I have come across a book describing how ancient monastics used trances and visions of ecstasy to commune with heaven. So this is him obviously considering... Well, the druids didn't do any of this, but anyway... We could test our mystical practices or attempt to learn about the practice through books. Sure. Digging into the ancient texts, look at this. We get learning plus one and a learning uh, lifestyle perk unlocked. I think we'll go for restraint. And we'll work towards know thyself. Or possibly iron constitution, first of all. Now, like I said, I like to be able to read... In the 866 start, unfortunately, so does everyone else. And you can see that basically the whole place has been raided down. There's nowhere we can go. Except Leinster, which has a substantial army. Dublin, which has a substantial army. And Meath, which we're allied to. Uh, we've taken a prisoner. We will ransom them straight out. And we'll see if we can actually 
get around this army without having to fight it. With the money that we've put together from ransoming out that hostage, we are going on a hunt to get some prestige together. We're not in a position to lose gold, so we're going to drive the rabble out of our hunting grounds. It is probably going to lead to a popular revolt at some stage. Now we're going to try and go up into Tier Cunnel. We get another 150 prestige. We're going to try and go up into Tier Cunnel and uh, get some more money and prestige this way. It does not look like it's going to end well for us. They took my money. And to make things worse, the Dalgosh have actually decided that they're going to try and attack us. I don't think we're going to be able to get reinforcements together. Uh, we'll go in against them. It's not a great, not a great battle position. Uh, we get Secrets of Nature. We could learn... We could get the Herbalist trait. It'll give us disease resistance. We'll take that. So here is Conan, who taught us how to be a Herbalist. I think what we will do is we will, if he is keeping secrets, I will find them. So it's a 58% chance to discover if he is a witch. But instead he is disappointed with us. This battle is turning on a knife edge. And I think we've managed to take back the money that they took from us. It's taken us a while to recover from that failed raid way up into the north of the country. It was a bit, it was a bit over ambitious. What I was planning on doing was attacking Osri. However, Karul Makdunlana had formed an alliance with, I think, Mead and Ivali. Uh, historically, Osri was part of the Kingdom of Munster, and Karul Makdunlana actually got his father-in-law, the High King of Ireland, Moel Shocknail Makmoel Runaid, to split it out of Munster. Well, Karul has died. His son is now... In power, all of the alliances are gone. And we are going to declare war to seize the county. Now, a bit worrying is what we've just seen here. Dublin has seized Leinster. Uh, enemy combatants captured. Well, they are dead, so I don't think that's, uh, that's much of a help. But we've just seen Dublin has conquered Kildare and Leinster. So it's on our borders. It's growing in strength. We bring this war to an end. Now that's going to take us over our domain limit. So what I am going to do is we're going to come to our council. Here is Angus, the ancestor of the Dovdab Wirren, who will give his name to the Odavran family. And I am going to grant him Osri. We are told that our glory is widely known. We are distinguished, so we have 3,000 more prestige points to get before we are in a position to reinstall the druids. But until then, we might as well kick open the ale. We will hold a feast, try and get some stress down. And we're now being called into a conquest against the Dalnaradi. We'll accept, but we're not really in a position to help all that much at the moment, unfortunately. Anytime I hold a feast, somebody goes and drinks all of the wine. Because we can't risk losing any prestige, we're going to fork out the extra 50 gold. Now, the worst thing is that Meath has entered this war against uh, the Dalnaradi. But the other major problem is that a Viking army has landed. Now, yeah, it's telling us, you see, they they have recently disembarked. That's the only benefit that we're getting. We gain 150 prestige and guests gain opinion with us. Oh, it turned, it turned very bad there all of a sudden. And our wife, Bardov, her father, is actually losing this battle up here very badly at the moment. We've stolen one of the Viking ships. We have spotted a Leviathan. And we're going to gain 75 prestige by letting it go. So not a lot we were able to do there for Let Lober. Well, 
this is awkward. My wife and my son are discussing my fertility. I have no issues. And that'll give us 35 prestige. And uh, we're going to use that prestige to create a bowman regiment. And we'll start expanding out the army now that we have prestige to do that. We do need another 300, however, before we can implement tanistry, which is something that I want to do just as a failsafe should something happen to poor Krahur. What we're going to need to do, first of all, is to continue our expansion. We're still trying to get the Dalgash to join us peacefully. So what we're going to do is declare war on Ivali. They have just been raided. They've seen a good chunk of their army wiped out. So we're pushing beyond the borders of Munster. We have another learning lifestyle perk. I think we'll go for Iron Constitution to fend off diseases and then we'll get Know Thyself the next time around. They're telling us the battle is looking even. We have a bit of an advantage on them, however. Our son has become a renowned physician. Excellent. And with that, we have taken E Valley. Now, we were very briefly over our domain limit there, but by putting our primary wife, whose father, the ruler of the Isle of Man, died, and whose brother won't form an alliance with us, by putting her on managed domain, uh, we've gotten up to uh, the ability to hold four domains. Somebody is offering us a an alliance. Oh no, they're offering to um, to return our wife to us for 43 gold. Do you know what... The leather must have gotten lost in the post. Because there's a lot better things that I could do with that money, and one of them is calling a hunt. And it's taken us a bit of work, but we are finally in a position to offer vassalage to Lorcan of the Dalgash. We could start trying to sway Dunica, because as you can see, we're at four out of four. So trying to... Hold additional territories is going to cause trouble. He's at 47. Do you know what? We'll begin swaying him anyway. Ugh. That's because he's paranoid. So it wasn't the best of hunts. It wasn't the worst of hunts. We get 150 prestige. And we can see that the Dalgash have joined Munster. We're going to attempt our second great raid. After the failure of the last one. So a lot of this chunk of the country now is actually unraided so hopefully we'll be able to get some money and prestige together Hanukt I think has decided that they're coming for us now that we've gotten some gold together or ear Hanukt with any look we'll see them off the army has recovered from the raids into Hanukt and we have spotted that Brefni is now under the control of a Norse dynasty. Norse adventurers keep landing on the island and taking control of regions. In the base game, that's devastating because there are so few counties. But with the tip volume 2 mod, uh, when you have all these new counties created, the island is able to absorb these incursions a lot easier. I see a lot of people saying that they can't play in 867 or 866 because of the Viking invasions. So I like this, the fact that there are extra counties and the fact that you can then form alliances with the Vikings uh, also helps you to, um, to get around them. They will accept an alliance. They won't accept vassalage. Well, will you accept war? You will. Well, that was lucky that I was going to wander in with... Um, Without calling in any allies, they have called in a tremendous amount of allies. So we're going into a death trap. We will park ourselves, possibly, uh, right here and uh, get to calling in some allies. We have called in a string of allies. We have called in Meath. We have called in Tyrconnell. I've actually just married the three-year-old daughter of the King of Tyrconnell. And uh, we're going in ourselves. Is Mead going to send in its forces? Mead, or not Mead, but Tyrconnell. Tyrconnell's forces are kind of going in all over the place. They let us go in first. 
Thanks, guys. We're now in a position to unlock Know Thyself. Healthy would be fantastic. So if we can get through uh, the next two fairly soon. What are we talking about? 57. 57 and his health is poor. And we have a good chunk to go. In getting to that next level of fame, we have a long way to go. I'm not too sure what way this is looking. If Tyr Cunnel wander in, which it looks like they will. Uh, 15 gold to continue swaying. Our grandson was killed in battle. Well... That's awkward. It actually is very awkward. A number of things have happened. Our personal champion, Constantine, has died as a result of his injuries in that war. And our son, Krahur, is badly maimed. He's fine. But uh, he is disfigured and his son has been slain in battle. So that was, a, that was a costly, costly war to drive the Vikings out of that region. I've handed it over to one of our... I think he's our marshal, so I've given the, the region to him. He can control that. So that kind of casts the future of the dynasty into a small bit of, small bit of difficulty. Do you see? Look at that. We didn't even need to pay. And the Vikings released our wife. It was fine. Insularism has spread into Mercia. Well, lads, I have a much better religion to tell you about shortly. I'm waiting to see what exactly is going on here. Uh, Ivonia and... Uh, the My Nai are basically fighting each other, I'd say, to a stalemate. Yeah, pretty much. So what we're going to do is we're going to help to break that stalemate. Oh, the devils down in Munster. While we are sieging Connacht, we are told that there is a rebellion in Thuvuan. We will rally the troops. I'd say what we should be able to do is split them in half. We're seeing a large Viking invasion force, the Earldom of Diflin has hit Osri. There's not a, a whole lot that we can do. We brought that peasant uprising to an end. We march these guys north just uh, Well, I was going to say just to be safe. There's nothing to be safe from, really. I think we don't have much of a choice but to um, try and stand down those armies. We, we can't take on that force. Oh, the devils. Yeah, we'll pay the 30 gold. While our kingdom burns, what we're going to do is call a hunt. We have become a novice hunter. And I think in total we have gained 350 prestige. Or 300 prestige, I should say, on that adventure. We killed an animal for 150 and we gained the final 150. So that puts us over the halfway mark. And the problem is, well, there you go. They've uh, they've gone away. Hopefully they're they're gone for good. We are into our early 60s and we're being told that our health is poor. What we're going to do is we're going to add laws. We're going to add tanistry elective to the kingdom of Munster. Now, we're going to support uh, Krahur. So it's actually absolutely no change. And indeed, the only other person we could support would be Angus. But we will support Krahur, our son, for the succession. And what we will do then is we are going to declare war to seize Ivonia. Ivonia are taking one last strike at us. Uh, we have conquered 
Yvonne, yeah? We've taken some prisoners. Let's see if we can ransom. We get 25. And we wouldn't get any for those two. This is, of course, the uh, peasant leader who we will recruit. So, Magron, the poor man, has given us that money, which means that we can enforce our demands. And we should now be in a position... There is the Duchy of Connacht to create that title. Oh, this was bad timing. This was bad timing. We're going to, because we're coughing, we're going to try and do no more than is necessary. We feel even worse. We're going to tell him to go away, that we want to rest. This was very bad timing because we are so close to getting the healthy park. Now, let's see how we are doing at the moment. We're poor. We're poor. So that was, that was unfortunate timing. Another thing that we're doing is we're trying to sway Morica, who controls these two territories. And if we can sway him, we will have enough land under our control to form the High Kingship. Now, we won't have the money. There we go. That is that perk that we need. So we will take the healthy perk. So we'll see how that, uh, that fares out. Uh, we could hold a feast. I don't think we need to, to keep anybody in line so he's at minus 20 we could throw some money at him we'd need to get the money first of all however and what we've done is increased the light footman by one now what i'm going to do is i'm going to raise all here we will set them to raiding and we don't have that many targets we're allied to mead Dublin is a bit of a challenge at the moment. We're trying to sway these guys, so we definitely won't be taking them on. There, yeah, there's not a hope we'll be taking them on. So it's in to the northeast corner, because I think we should, in a battle, be able to fight these guys. We have lost the trait ill. That is absolutely fantastic. And our health is still poor. Well, we're not going to be able to sway Chieftain Morica, because he's after passing away... He has had one successor who quite likes us. For 25 quid, we could increase our standing with him by 26. I'm going to send him that money. And he will accept vassalization. We've landed in Scotland for the fun of it. I thought we were going to be attacked but we're not uh, we only picked up seven gold we now have the land required to form the kingdom of ireland if i'm correct i need to actually check this again a second uh, we do indeed we need however another 120 gold and that's going to be tough to put together and just like that our wife has found 50 gold And we brought back seven. Boys, oh boys, we're nearly there. Desperate times call for desperate measures. What we're going to do is we're going to break the betrothal to Alva, the daughter of the ruler of Tyrconnell. It's going to cost us 75 prestige. At the moment, the most important thing is getting the money to form the High Kingship. If Kukungelt dies as High King then Krahur is going to have a much easier time. So we've broken that alliance, and what that will now allow us to do is we will raise our forces. We will set them to raiding, and we will go in and we'll see if we can capture Alva. And by studying mystical texts, we have unlocked another lifestyle perk that will give us whole of body. And let's see where that puts us now. Our health is still poor. I'd be hoping that it's going to be enough that what we can do is switch. There's no need to go down the scholar focus. We'll switch to wealth. And we'll see if we can get some options that might get the extra money together that we need. Now here is a bit of a problem. 
here is a bit of a problem. Everything was fine up until this point, because if we had died, even without forming the High Kingship, we only had one son. We now have two sons. Ulgarg. Moel Pol. The Servant of Pol. Uh, we captured somebody. I'm not too sure who. We will indeed get ten quid for one of them. And then we're talking about Lassariana, Nick Lorcan. So this is our vassal's daughter, who is married to the son of the ruler of Tyrconnell, if I'm correct. We will release her. And Philip, do you know what? There's another knight for the army. I don't think we have much of a choice but to return to Scotland and see if we can siege down a few places there. Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to lose some troops if we want to take Lanark. Will we lose more if we come down here? We won't. So we'll try and take Annadale. And then wander back through here. Now that we're into our 60s, we're having a ton of children. We've taken a martial hostage. Nobody that we can ransom out. However, from our brief raids into Scotland, we do have 53 gold on our personage. And if we can just make it back before Kukangelt dies. Now, of course, we know that he's not going to die anytime soon because we have that trait. That will give us a year's notice. The Kingdom of Ireland. 175 gold will give us 400 prestige and we create that title. As High King, you have new duties and responsibilities, says Lorcan of Dalgosh. And he has created... An Onuth Rahland banner. How fitting it is that the Dalgash should serve us in this fashion. It was the Onuth Rahland who uh, killed Brian Brew's brother, Mahoon, that effectively brought Brian Brew to power, and Brian Brew was a, a descendant of Lorcan. So I think Lorcan's son was Kinetig, and then Brian Brew was uh, Kinetig's son. So, let us enter our royal court. Let's, we'll see other matters call my attention at the moment. And we're now in a position where we are just, what, 160, 159 prestige short of realizing our goal of instituting Druidism. Returning to the ancient ways. Like I said, worst comes to worst. And... The High King dies. Our son Krahur will succeed us. And he has the uh, the learning characteristics as well. Some things that we can do first. We can hang up some ornaments. All of which give us prestige. We will put the Dynasty banner behind us. And we'll put the House banner over here. I think the court already begins to realize the High King's intention of restoring the ancient Druidic faith. They are bringing us stories of heads rolling around on the ground and they believe that one of them has rolled into our court. I think our court grandeur is so low that we will either give them leave to search, we might as well give them leave to search the court. And for the High Kingship, I believe we have the ability to enact a special succession type for 300 prestige. So the Kingdom of Era will gain Tanistry elective. And we now have an election and we will of course nominate Ku Kangelt. Or not Ku Kangelt, but Kruhur Mach Ku Kangelt. Now the bad news is that since we installed... Tanistry, Angus 
has been nominated by all of the vassals as the successor. So unless we can convert the island to Druidism by the end of Ku Kongel's life, we might have failed in our objective. The good news, however, is that we are in a position to call a hunt. You would think it a creature from myth, perhaps a god disguised in animal form. Surely one of the Thuwede Danan. And it gives us a court artifact. The Fearsome Fox of Ivali. And we return home. Invigorated with 150 prestige. And our glory is widely known. The first thing we will do is we will go to our royal court. And we will put that fearsome fox just over our throne. And finally, after all this time, we will realize the Odavrin's desire to restore the Druids to power. For generations, the Onoth Rahlan dynasty has worshipped God and heeded the teachings of the abbots, as has been customary in era since time immemorial. However, there are whispers at court that High King Kukangel's interests in Celtic theology now delves towards the occult, and even that he is a witch who wishes to convene with the Druids. So we will convert to Gaelic, an unreformed Gaelic faith. We will gain seven stress, and some vassals will lose opinion. We shall finally join our ancestors in the other world. Well, the first thing that I've noticed is that we have been given a massive expansion to our army. I'm not going to complain about that. Here is the Gaelic faith that we have converted to. Esotericism. We have Kayla, or Kaylee. Hosting a feast earns piety. Vassals are more likely to attend your feasts, and those who refuse to come will lose piety. And the sanctity of nature. And we can see our holy sites. We have Ushnuk, one of the most important, much more important than Tara. Uh, Tara was the kind of the ancient center of politics, but Ushnuk was believed to be the navel of Ireland. It was believed to be in the dead middle of the country. And Sligo. And then we have Lewis, the Orkneys, and Salisbury. So this is my first time seeing this Gaelic uh, faith. Oh boys, fertility, plus 10. So we want to try and take that. So spreading out into these regions, uh, taking Lewis and Orkney, anyway, are going to be priorities for the newly reformed, the newly Gaelic, unreformed Celtic faith. And here then is our court druid, Sean of Era. He is Gaelic, unreformed, a more insular form of the Celtic faith practiced in Ireland and Scotland. Gaels revere a race of gods known as the Tuathé, or the Tuathé Dallan. Gaelic druids host regular feast days and festivals, and are venerated as teachers and seers. So I think the first and most important thing that we're going to have to do is to begin the process of demanding the court's conversion. So, demand conversion. There's a 100% acceptance chance. Now, can we get this man to convert? Risky. We've had a number of high-ranking conversions, but Lorcan the Fool refuses to do so. Lorcan, I only wished for your salvation. Now, look at this. Angus knows the way the things are going. Blessed be Danu. And actually, while we're here, I suppose we as might as well put our court druid converting the faith in. Where do we start? I'm probably going to move the capital to Thuavuan at some stage. I, do you know what? We'll start in Desvuan. We'll start in Desvuan where it all began. Now, it is going to take 25 years, however. 
Now that we have restored the Druids to power in Ireland, we have a new decision, Defenders of Danu. And that will give us the ability to build a special building, the Hall of Heroes, at a Gaelic holy site that we control. So we need to hold, uh, personally hold a holy site. We need to get our level of devotion up to Devoted Servant, and we need to have four powerful vassals with 60 opinion of us. That could be a bit of a challenge. We also need to get 100 gold together. That shouldn't be the worst. And I think that is the next goal of High King Kukongelt to proclaim himself a holy warrior of Danu, and he has been given a lot of warriors with which to achieve that goal. Thank you for joining me on this episode. I had tremendous fun with, with this. I don't usually do these kind of a historical restore pagans to power kind of thing, but I have thoroughly enjoyed this. If you haven't done so already, do check out the Tip Volume 2 mod. The link is in the description. And you know what? Think about subscribing to the channel if you haven't, to be kept up to date with all the new videos that are going to be coming out. Some on Viki 3 coming soon, and I'll be playing more CK3 and doing videos on Irish history in Crusader Kings 3. So thank you all very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope to see you on the next one. And, Luke and Rory, if you're listening, be good. Behave. Your father wants to play the Darkest Dungeons board game.